Hi guys and welcome to another review on JDM Masters and today we have Japonix NC Roadster. Let's have a look at what's been done to it. Join us. So we have the third generation Mazda Roadster MX-5 Miata. There's so many names but it's called the Roadster in Japan. Incidentally Roadster means an open top car. It's what they call it in Japan, open car or a convertible or a drop top. There's so many names but anyway the third generation is perhaps seen by fans as the least favorite, the kind of black sheep of the MX-5 family. Now why is that? Coming from the NB generation, it grew bigger, heavier, fatter, had a bigger engine. It was kind of outside of that purest lightweight roadster concept. But in our opinion, it is now, especially in 2020, 15 years after its introduction in 2005, maybe one of the most affordable budget cars for sports driving that you can buy today. And so the example here we have today is a standard base model NCEC 2005 first generation called Zenki in Japan pre-facelift. In fact, there were three different versions. This is the earliest one with the round front headlights and the circle well, fog lights. Well, these aren't even a fog like it. This is the base model without a lot of these important sporting options. It had a five-speed manual. It had no rear differential, no fog lights, no leather, anything in the interior. It was the cheapest uh, base model. Now, even back then, let's see how much it cost in Japan. Now, for those of you who are overseas may know this car very, very well, and you can probably get them, which is the reason why we're talking about this today. It is still a JDM model because it's a Japanese model. All right, let's see. It's 2.2 million yen. So that's 22,000 American dollars. Now, how much did you buy it for, Japonic? at the auctions? $1,500. That's unbelievable. $1,500... What? What? <laughs> what was the mileage of this? 140,000 kilo. 140,000 kilometers. That's not too bad. The engine will still run fine, but he did a lot of things. Well, well, the story is this. He wanted something to enjoy that's not such a high cost, open top car to enjoy during the summer. In Japan, it's really wonderful. You have a lot of nice sunny days. You can go on the mountains, unlike rainy UK or some other yeah, <laughs> rainy days. Of course, we can't open the top today. So this is the concept to buy a very cheap NC Roadster and then modify it to see how far we can, we can go. If it's even close or can it exceed the RS model, which had the six speed manual, all the bangs and whistles, LSD. Now there's a big list of things he's put into this car which has increased its performance and also its value. Now the first thing you probably notice is this kind of what is this like a mini surfboard on on the rear. Well fortunately it's not a backyard job it's a proper carbon fiber rear wing with the proper design a 3D shape that should help in aerodynamics well, of course when choosing a gt wing it's important to consider the overall dynamics of the original base model and choose one that actually works now having it too high or too low uh, doesn't give you the aerodynamic effects and thanks to uncle br thank you very much he's improved the performance of this very sedate roadster now it also came from the factory with the gentle boot lip spoiler so both of them works probably giving it a lot more downforce than what the power can generate but nonetheless it's a good addition yeah you did feel the downforce effects of this right i use it most in convenience store as a table, <laughs> <laughs> as a table. that's right so you can put your cookies and your chocolate and your but <laughs> but <laughs> now obviously this is not immediately necessary but it does improve the looks of it uh, quite a lot in fact um, I like it I like it now it originally came with 16 inch wheels and these are the stock wheels from the RS model now, the brakes the tires AD08 got suspension exhaust an ECU tune uh, done by BR which is very important now and we've got Roadster that the Japan just got it's got an ECU tune and as you can see from the video here um, just by cleaning up the throttle body and doing a bit of ECU tuning, how the response has increased tremendously. 
And um, BR, some of you might know, had the chance to compare the car when it was bone stock. We drove it in Hakone. It had no LSD. Going around the corners uh, was, 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 was such a slippery affair. It was like trying to run on an oval track with, with wet slippers. You know, you just had no grip at all. It's like a shopping cart. It's like a shopping cart in, in Walmart. <laughs> You know, or, or, or say you, you're trying to spin around. But after these modifications, it started to behave like a proper sports car. Now, an interesting fact, um, Albo, who, our friend who bought an S2000 at about the same time, now the S2000 comes equipped with an LSD and, and all these uh, good equipment. It was, well, an unintentional race to see if we could get this Roadster MX-5 to have the same enjoyment level as an S2000, but it kind of worked. So let's have a look at what exactly has gone into this car. Okay, so just gonna read from the top. You bought the car for like $3,000 plus the Shaken insurance, everything in. And you've done the throttle body cleaning and a good oil change, $250, which is very important. Never underestimate, you know, the improvements done by actually cleaning up your old engine and give we could recover much more power and a lot of response from it. Now the ECU tuning was something that really helped a lot. The standard ECU was kind of gentle. Of course, this generation of car, original had the electronic throttle body, which of course, the stock ECU's settings is kind of gentle. The curve kind of goes like this, but the ECU tuning kind of made it more responsive, giving more mid-range, which completely changed. Yeah. The characteristics quite surprising actually that um, most NC rotors I've driven until this point have not been so responsive so this was actually the most impressive tuning that I think has gone into it uh, the muffler great sound from it Isn't that a bit too loud? It's changing mufflers is always something subjective and something personal. Besides getting more torque and a bit more power in response, most aftermarket mufflers don't actually do much in terms of increasing overall power. It's all about balance. If you change a muffler, the ECU tuning and the intake, everything has to balance each other. But personally, mm, I don't know, it might be a little bit too loud to stand on a daily basis. Maybe good for the track. But Japonic also says that after he changed it for a lot, two weeks, it was a bit too much. But much better than the stock one, was really, which is really, really quiet. Definitely changing the sporting character of the car. But I, the thing that changed it the most was this, wasn't it? Uh, okay. Brakes, tires. Oh, it's electric release. Yeah, the rear is electric release. The front is not. You just Did I just open the trunk? Yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> Did I just open the trunk? Well, since we're here, might as well look at how much space the NC Roadster has. And here we are, the Auto XA rear strut bar, which is hidden neatly behind the covers. Uh, it's a double wishbone suspension, which incidentally comes from the RX-8. So this is what gives the NC Roadster its really good handling character. The acclaimed RX-8 chassis uh, double wishbone in wheel suspension front and rear with the Mazda PPF power plant frame uh, that attaches the drivetrain and the rear diff together is what gives it its its character. And so that was carried over to the NC Roadster in a shortened wheelbase. Obviously the body has less rigidity from the open top but because the weight is really low you never really feel that it's lacking anything. Um, it's not much trunk space but more than enough. I think it's probably the same size as a Honda S2000 so still something practical and usable if you're just by yourself. Now let's have a look at under the hood. Found it. This is really light. This is steel, isn't it? Is it aluminium? No, this is, this is not, this is not aluminium. It is. This is aluminium. Do you have magnets? No, but I'm not convinced. 
Okay, it is aluminium. <laughs> Just the sound of it. That's fantastic. Mazda insists on making their rear-wheel drives 50-50, had to resort to using an aluminium bonnet for the NC Roadster. I believe the NA and the NB were steel. It's not too bad, really. Really good equipment. So let's have a look at the basic specs of the standard Mazda LFVE 2-litre DOHC four-cylinder engine. 170 horsepower, 6,700 RPM. Not that much for a 2-litre compared to the Honda or Toyota engines, which could do a lot more. But that was not the point of Mazda. Mazda engines are always about simplicity and overall reliability, which also gives it a lot of space to modify and tune. It's a good base for uh, the price that you're paying. Now, it's also a long stroke engine, which already gives it quite good mid-range torque characteristics. Compression, 10.5, no, so 10.8 for the JDM version. Not too bad, actually. Um, you could see here, there's a lot of tuning potential uh, if you want to put money into the engine. But otherwise, it's been left stock. The ECU retune was more than enough to give it uh, the much needed mid-range. Now something interesting about this Cusco strut bar, the attachment points for to near the firewall, there's a little plate here which if you can see underneath only comes with the RS model. The RS model comes with a standard strut bar but for the base model it didn't come so he had to buy the standard RS attachments in order to put this Cusco uh, strut bar that really changes the characteristics. He used Tain Flex Z if I'm not wrong with a adjustable here for the damping and you can see here uh, it's very obvious green tain and blue Cusco very JDM colors isn't it um, otherwise the Mazda four cylinders is actually pretty good for driving around town and if you want to go for short blasts on the mountain with, with good tires and the good suspension and brakes which are the most important it can really transform a simple roadster that was meant to maybe this spec was just for uh, you know retirees or for people who didn't really want to drive it sportily versus the higher end and more expensive maybe it's twice the price now in japan or around the world of course there are other special editions but you know you do you can consider buying something this cheap and the total package and overall you could get 80 percent of the fun of an s2000 which costs what, 10 times more. Considering that perhaps you might not be able to use the S2000's full potential on, on back roads or unless it's in a circuit. And if something does break, uh, Mazda parts are much cheaper, they're much more available, there's much more of them around in the world. And you still get that Japanese reliability overall from a small package like this. In the interior, you know, so it's been a while since I've been in Japonics. NC roads though it's changed so much I'm um, just getting out of that a normal four-door family sedan with the higher driving position into a low slung sports car like this uh, you sat much lower and the gear shift is at a high position which you can rest your elbow shift the gears a much more sporty way you're looking just over that bonnet line being closer to the ground Oh my goodness, how much this car has changed. ECU. Giving a more response to this 2 liter NA engine of the Mazda NC generation. It doesn't have that same feel as a Honda VTEC. In fact, it kind of feels a little bit like the Tornio over R H22A that we tested a while back ago. Uh, it's very different in character, but it, it's a lot of usable torque. And it's going on the highway. Fifth gear, uh, 3,000 revs. Pushing that throttle down has, it gives it a much better response. So the car is now equipped with different suspension, a much more sportier setup. Cusco strut bars in front and the back to stiffen up the feedback between the left and the right giving him overall rigidity, but I do feel immediately getting out from a closed roof car into uh, a roadster, open type car, uh, the body rigidity is a bit different, but it doesn't mean that the suspension isn't working on this. Uh, it just feels very different now. 
that drone from the exhaust and the lack of soundproofing over the roof it just comes in the cabin a lot more compared to just a normal family saloon but this is what a sports car is about and for the amount of money that he spent putting parts into this it does transform the car quite a lot it reminds me of how much the NC Roadster is a very overlooked option even amongst hardcore Roadster or MX-5 Miata fans it's always been criticized as being a bit overweight when it came out in 2005 compared to the more lightweight and smaller and leaf NA and NB which the NB Roadsters now are become fast becoming modern classics but the NA is in the realm of already classics pop-up headlights and the chassis of the NC is based on the RX-8 giving it that same transmission tunnel you know, the PPF frame the front double wishbone suspension a lot revised from the, the previous model but it's got a shorter wheelbase a regular two liter four cylinder engine and driving this with these modifications which aren't too excessive gives it a much better feel in terms of let's rev it up the third gear the road holding is also different Electric power steering has a nice weight feel to it. It feels a little bit like the high, unconventional hydraulic steering. But at a certain point, once you turn it, you can feel the electric motor sort of gripping the shaft. It might be strange to say this, but. Now the interior of a 2005 generation NC Roadster MX-5. Uh, you know the drab plastics everywhere, uh, typical of Mazda cars, uh, even of this generation. You can't really expect too much, but the overall design has been kept from the previous model, but it's starting to show its age, uh, especially this sort of cheaper model that we bought. Um, hasn't been really kept in pristine condition by the previous owners. It's, you can really see the wear and tear and it's been used. Uh, all this paint from the fake aluminium brushing is coming off. The plastic's really scuffed up. Um, you could make a lot of effort and restore these and make it look nice. But really what this car is about is just to get out there and enjoy driving. Um, you know, it's not really a limited edition car that you probably want to keep for a long time and hold its value probably won't hold its value and it's not what it's meant to be this is just something that you can just take out and take it to the racetrack or your favorite back mountain roads not care about it being in your condition that's the whole point that's the beauty of the NC Roadster today uh, the cost performance value uh, is one of the best if you just want to enjoy sporty motoring for a lower cost and not worry about uh, not getting parts for the older generation engines so the interior otherwise is pretty much standard five-speed manual uh, but the other things that if you want to go further you can change these things like the steering wheel and the seat itself uh, maybe put a half roll cage and one thing that we like about the NC Roadster is the really easy quick release mechanism press a button here push this back all hand operated and you got a soft top straight away it's raining now maybe it's not really good let's put this back <laughs> all right so release mechanism lifts up and do i need to do this oh you know if i do this every day i could really work out my muscles <laughs> right this is a good this is a good workout if i do this every day several times but otherwise putting it back is not so much of a hassle like that should you consider if you're a young sports car enthusiast and you're on kind of a budget consider one of these or maybe the newer 
GT86 or the Subaru BRZ. Now these are the two cars that you can consider because of its price now relative to the performance. The FR platform is also a really good sports base for you to get basic good skills and improve your performance driving and get the feel of car handling and dynamics. So the MX-5 is a popular and celebrated car around the world but many are missing out on the tuning potential and the fun that you can have with the NC. Now just forget about a minute for about all the purist talk about the NC and you know the NDs all maybe gone back to its original roots. Maybe the NC right now is the budget car that you can take your time and customize and tune according to what you like and what you need. So in conclusion, the NC Roadster could be the next generation AE86. Might not actually go up so much in level, but it is a car that you can buy, drive and tune now without breaking your wallet. But let us know in the comments if you think otherwise or if you can suggest any other car in the Japanese range that could maybe rival or match the cost performance of the NC Roadster and let us know. Now also stay tuned for our next car review of the Honda Torneo Accord CL1 Euro R. And until then, thanks for watching and until next time, peace out.